Well, good morning. good morning. So if you haven't seen that movie, it's called Wonder. That's a great movie. And here's the thing. As we watch from this side, we understand that there are steps we have to take to grow. And so we're all rooting for him as he goes to school and realize how hard it must be um, to have a disability and go to school and all those things. And, and yet, we don't understand sometimes what it means for us to grow. Now, before we get started, I want to say hi to a few folks who are watching online. Sherry and Kathy and Darlene and Karen. Randy's mama is watching from freezing cold tundra of Iowa today. And, of course, Mama Rose. She's, she's, she's always watching. So, anyway, Jennifer, thanks for matching my sweater today. Makes me feel good. Um, and Margaret and Jen and many others watching online, we're glad to have you. And I'm glad to have you guys here. We have so many people who do a great job in the morning uh, uh, preparing our hearts uh, for God to continue to work on them. Uh, Rodney, we appreciate you this morning. Steve shared last night. I'll be sharing in next service again. We'll have the Lord's Supper at the end of service today. Um, David, who does uh, uh, dialysis every night and then poor jokes during the day. So we, we, just, we feel like maybe that has to do with dialysis. I'm not sure. But anyway, but, but thank you for sharing this morning. We're praying that God continues to bless you guys. Listen, let me ask you a question. Have you ever met somebody as a, that's a Christian who gives you this, you, you just sense peace and joy when you're around them? It seems like maybe when you're around them that no matter what happens to them, nothing unsettles them. And um, you ever want to be like that? See, the truth is many of us as Christians have forgotten that one of the things that we're encouraged to do in Scripture is grow. And it's not just grow as a person. It's not just being nicer. It's not just being nicer to people. And let's just all love one another. And it's not just that. It's really, listen, it's really growing towards knowing God more every day. Because the truth is, when you grow in your relationship with God, all these other things are natural. Listen, no matter what I do or what I say to this plant, it is not going to grow because it's plastic and plastic doesn't grow and if <laughs> and even dies sometimes, but right? And there are people who do religious things and outwardly they pretend but there's really no life in there. Because they're doing a bunch of things thinking that maybe I'll earn my way to God. Maybe God will be pleased with me. And not understanding that growth is really something that only God can do. Today we're going to talk about this idea that you don't really create your own spiritual growth. God has to do that. But there are some things that we can make sure of in order for God to help us grow. We're going to talk about creating an environment for growth and honoring our sacred nature. But let's kick off this idea in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. We're going to talk about almost the whole chapter. And here's point number one. We need God to make us grow. Now, you can put on fake spiritual fruit. You can pretend you're peaceful and be like a duck who is peaceful up top, but inside you're freaking out. Or you can really plug into God. Let's see what's happening in this early church. I'm going to go ahead and read this passage and then explain what was going on in this church in Corinth. 1 Corinthians 3, we'll pick up in verse 5. What, after all, is Apollos? Now, Apollos was one of their preachers. You need to know that, okay? So what all is Apollos? And what is Paul? He's talking about himself. Like, what is Paul? Like, you know, only the guy who wrote most of our New Testament. But, you know, hey, who's, who's Paul, right? Only servants. Paul says this. We're only servants, through whom you came to believe. So he's talking to the early church. As the Lord has assigned, listen, each to his task. I planted the seed, and then Apollos came, right, as a pastor, and watered it. But God has been making it grow. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who makes things, what's the next word? Grow, who makes things grow. The one who plants, the one who waters have one purpose, and they'll each be rewarded according to their own labor. Now, I'm going to come back to this sentence, but I'm going to read it to you now. For we are co-workers in God's service. You are God's field, God's building. Now, the very early church got off focus. Now, that shouldn't surprise. Every once in a while, somebody's like, you realize the church is messed up. And I'm like, the church has always been messed up. 
This is not something new. Paul's dealing with the early church in 1 Corinthians. They were having parties in the parking lot for Lord's Supper, getting drunk before coming into the service. Worse than that, Paul said, they weren't sharing food with the hungry people. They were having a festival in the parking lot and going, no, no, this food is for our barbecue. So they had a tailgate party before church, which is an awesome thought. But then they were coming to Lord's Supper, and Paul talks about it being in an unworthy manner. And that's why, because what were they doing? They were not only getting drunk, they were also not helping the people who were hurting and needy. And I, I, I always wonder if Paul would have been okay with the one without the other, but we won't say which one. Now, here's the deal. We live in a world where we rate everything, right? You get a Yelp review, right? We got some people here who own their own business, and every once in a while, you'll get this weird Google review, and you're like, what? You'll, you'll get a Yelp review, and you'll think, what happened? I read a Yelp review this week, which I thought was great. It's for a place called Taco Santo. And here's what the guy said. The entire kitchen and wait staff saw an ice cream truck and ran outside, leaving me alone in the restaurant. Ten minutes later, they all came back with ice cream cones. I still can't believe this happened. Now, I want to go to that place because I'm thinking he gave it a one star. And I'm thinking, that's the coolest place ever. The people are just like ice cream and they run out the door. I might go to the kitchen and cook myself something while they're doing that, right? So here's the thing about Yelp reviews. That's fine for businesses. But I always think it's weird that we rank churches now. You can go and, and if you want to have some unfun fun, you can read reviews of other churches. That to me would be like doing a Google review of somebody's family. Can you imagine somebody posting about you? Well, you know, Eric, uh, this one kid he has, boy, he's a mess. But, but that other one, boy, I really like that one. Right? You don't rank family member. Well, I hope you don't. I like this kid. That one, eh, not so much. Right? We hate parents that are like that. And yet, people do that with churches all the time. And they go home, and they're ranking that service. Well, that service was pretty good. You know, the pastor's message today could have been, or the music was, you know, well, the drummer was, you know, hey, I heard that the, ba hey, did you notice? And they do a Yelp review on their way home. You ready? You ready? With the children in the car. And then they wonder why when their kids are growing up, they don't want to be any part of the church. Because you created critics. You grew critics in your car on the way home. You thought you were growing disciples of Christ, and yet what you did is you grew critics because all the way home you said, well, I give it a 7 today out of 10. And here's the deal. When the Bible says we are co-workers, that word is the word where we get, and if you're in a corporate meeting, you're going to hear this word. It's where we get the word synergy. Okay? In the Greek, it's synergy. And what does that mean? It means one person alone isn't doing the work. It's everyone. And so the truth is, when it comes to Saturday nights and Sunday mornings in church and, and the growth of our church and who we are, it's not the pastor running all the plays. Can you imagine if Tom Brady had gone out during the playoffs and said, guys, I got this. And he went out by himself on the field and said, hike to himself. What do you think would have happened? Right, he would not be retiring, he would be retiring, right? And here's the deal, a lot of people think, well, the pastor, what's the pastor going to do? What's the pastor going to do? Hey, pastor, I got this great idea for a new ministry. What are, when are you going to do it? And I look at people all the time and go, yeah, what are you going to do? If God put that on your heart, or what are you going to do? <gasps> well, I didn't mean me doing it. Pastor, I want us to have a 24-hour pantry where people come and be great. What hours will you sign up for? I just wanted to donate some food. I, I didn't want to be there. When God calls us to grow, he's responsible for the growth. But the truth is, we have to participate in that. We have to be a part of it. Listen to what it says in this next verse, Galatians 6, 7, and 8. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please, and sows means not, not S-E-W, it's sows, throw in seed, whoever sows to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the spirit from the spirit will reap eternal life. So here's the question. Have you sown more seeds of entertainment and comfort this week or more seeds of God? What do you want me to do? 
God, I want to know you more. God, I want to worship you today. God, I want to allow you to permeate my life. I want to be closer to you. God, I'm going to spend time in your word. Or I'm going to watch the news all the time. I'm going to get worried and frustrated. I'm going to get aggravated with people. I'm going to think about that coworker. I'm going to focus on worry and fear. If you plant seeds that grow you closer to God, the fruit of that is love and joy and peace. Is the fruit in your life love and joy and peace, or is it worry and aggravation and selfishness and self-centeredness? See, in America, because we're so focused on entertainment and comfort, we get mad when somebody's in our chair. And then we think, why are people so selfish? And if we recognize the truth is, in the mirror, there's that person that's often selfish. And we're responsible for the seeds that we plant. So what seeds are you sowing in your life, in your heart? Is it God's word or is it something the media is telling you is important this week? Number two, we need the right environments. Listen, I have a brown thumb. I can kill anything. But, <laughs> Rodney told me this week he has a brown thumb too. Thanks, Rodney. All right, so, so here's the thing. Here's the thing, I can't grow anything, but I discovered years ago this product. Now, I am not selling it, I don't, there's not an app with Google with my name under it or anything, but I will tell you this, this is for dummies, and I plant roses, and my roses grow awesome. I have two roses that don't grow well, and here's why, they are my sacrificial roses to the deer in my neighborhood. I imagine Bambi bringing Rose home to mom. Here, mama. Oh, wait a second. It's been a long time since you've seen Bambi. Ended. All right. So, so what do I do? So once a month, what I do, I fill this. Oh, I got stuff. I fill this little cup. And you know what it does? Listen to what it does. I'm going to read it to you. It fertilizes. It stinks. It has insect control and disease control, and my roses grow great. Why? Because I don't have to water them. I got it set. It waters them. I, I got an automatic water. I don't have to worry about it. I, I plant it. I do that, and that's all I have to do, and it grows. Here's the deal. There are things in your life, even though you can't make it grow. I can't go out and say to my rose bush, grow. I mean, I could. I could sing to it. Listen to what the Bible says. By the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as a wise builder, and someone else is building on it. Listen. But each one, that's talking about you. You're responsible for your spiritual life. Are you doing anything about it? Each one should build with care. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one who already laid. Who is that? Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, straw, their work will be shown for what it is. Basically, what are you planting in your life? Is it, is it thoughts that help you to grow? Are you reading things that help you grow? Are you watching things that help you grow? Or are they hay and stubble? They don't really make a difference in your life other than adding worry and frustration and irritation to your life. And then it continues. Their work will be shown for what it is. Why? The day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire. And fire will test the quality of each person's work. If what's been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. If it's burned up, the builder will suffer loss, but yet will be saved, even though only as one escaping through the flames. Now, here's the thing. You can plant whatever in your life today, but you don't have a choice of whether it grows or not. If you watch things all the time that cause you to worry, then worry is going to grow in your life. If you talk, watch things all the time that make you angry all the time, then anger is going to grow in your life. And so I would say, look back at your week. What did you focus on? What did you read? What did you put in your eyes and in your mind? Was it something to help you grow seeds that would grow you closer to God? Or was it just junk? Was it just wood, hay, and stubble stuff? It doesn't really matter, and yet you spent your week focused on it because you're going to reap what you've sown. Now, I want to give you four habits that will help you to grow, and I'm actually teaching this in a class today, so I'm not going to go into detail, but here, here are the four, okay? Number one, daily Bible reading. 
I encourage you, before you open Facebook or Twitter or turn on your TV or whatever thing you do, maybe you ask Alexa what the weather is. I don't know what you do first thing in the morning. But before you do that, make the first thing in your day to read your Bible. Now, whether you have a little daily bread that you pick up, a little piece of paper, or whether you have an app on your phone that's the daily bread, go there first. Allow God to put his word in your heart first, because why? If you don't, then before you even get there, you'll forget to go there. You'll throw the seeds of worry and doubt and shame and aggravation and what's it going to be like today, and oh no, the weather's going to kill us all. That was this week, by the way. Did you, you notice the news? Was, we were going to all die? And at my house, it was about 30 seconds of, oh no, oh, that was it? But I was worried, because somebody kept throwing, you're all going to die in my house. Wait till the hurricane comes. We're all going to be throwing those seeds of watching the thing. What did you focus on this week? And if you'll spend time in God's word, that's the first habit. Second habit, prayer. Take time to pray. Pray before you worry. Whatever you're worried about, take time and lift it up. If you need to, write it on a piece of paper. Lord, I pray for this. If you're worried about the Ukraine, make that a daily or multiple times a day part of your prayer life. God, would you intervene? God does miracles. He can do a miracle. You realize that, right? God's, God's changed a lot of things over the years. If you don't know the history of America, they were burning down the White House. And rain came that wasn't supposed to come. I mean, there are miracles after miracles, the reason we're even able to sit here in freedom today. So prayer. Third, small group. Get with a group of people that can encourage you. So many people have neglected fellowshipping together. Listen, I don't care if you do it on Zoom, on the telephone, or in person. I encourage in person, but get with some people who can encourage you as you walk the Christian life. People who will miss you when you're missing and who you can help when they're hurting. But you've got to get close enough to people that they can see your faults. If you're not close enough to people for them to see your faults, you're not close enough to people you got to get close enough to people that when you do something dumb, they go, oh, no. And when they do something dumb, you go, oh, no. But you're close enough to them also to say, what do you need? How can I help you and encourage you? Number four, are you sharing your time and talents? God has given you gifts. He's given you talents. He's given you things to do. Are you sharing those? As you came in this morning, somebody greeted you at the door. They shared their talents. They gave you a bulletin. They, they shared the, the Lord's Supper we'll take later. Somebody greeted you at the door. Somebody took care of the kids next door. Somebody made sure the parking lot was clean, made sure that the grass was cut. All of these things come together one person after the other so that you and I can grow closer to God. Why? As we work together. Colossians 2, 6 and 7 says this, So then, just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives selfish and self-centered. By the way, our Christian life can even become selfish and self-centered if we're not careful. I want to be a better person because I want to be a better person. Why? So I won't be angry so much. So I won't be frustrated so much. So I won't be, and it's about you. No, what does it say? Rooted and... Excuse me, live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught. And then what happens? Overflowing with thankfulness. Thankfulness isn't natural for most of us, but when you have a relationship with God and you go closer to God, you become thankful. You know, one of the ways we grow is through trials. Some of you are going through trials right now. And you're like, God, why? God, why? And instead, we need to say, God, would you allow this? Do what you want to in me. You know, years ago, they had something called Biosphere 2. They, were, they made a dome hoping that they could take it into space and it would work. And they planted a bunch of trees, and the trees grew real fast. And they were like, wow, look how fast the trees are growing. And then the trees went, Pfft. And they were like, that is weird. The trees all fell over. And here's what they found out. Because there was no wind in the dome, the trees did not get stronger. So they would grow and then fall over and die. So they had to add wind. They had to add resistance. They had to add struggle. Listen, you are who you are today partially because of the struggles you've been through. Some of you are more sensitive, more thoughtful, more caring people because of the struggle you've been through. And now you realize, oh... So if you're going through a struggle right now, I know you pray like I do. God, I'll be glad to learn anything. Would you just give it over with? 
But as you're going through it, you just say, God, give me strength. God, you said that you would be with me always. Boy, it doesn't feel like it today. But I know by faith you're with me. There's a great quote by Henry Drummond that I'm not going to read. Number three, we need to honor our sacred nature. Now, this sounds like some kind of new age babble. But here's what I want you to know. The enemy has two plans. And his whole idea is to destroy you. And he'll do it one of two ways. He will either make you think you are the greatest person ever. Like people should love to just be around you. <laughs> Don't you just love me? Aren't I just awesome? And make you think about you all the time and how awesome you are compared to those other peons you have to deal with. Or, more likely... Well, I'm not, I don't have any gifts. I don't have any talents. I'm worthless. I don't matter to anybody. I don't matter in this world. By the way, both of those are selfish and self-centered. Because if you're prideful and arrogant, you won't help anybody. Why? Because you're better than them. Why would you reach down to those people who need you when you're so much better than they are? And when you're groveling, and self-centered, and you're thinking, I don't have any gifts, I'm going through a hard time, I'm in a struggle, poor me, poor me, poor me. Guess what? That's selfish and self-centered too. The enemy loves it. But when you recognize who you are in Christ and who he's made you to be, you can get rid of these weeds of doubt and shame. I'll talk about that in a second. Here's what Paul says. Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple? And God's spirit dwells in your midst. If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For God's temple is sacred. And you and together are God's temple. Don't deceive yourselves. If any of you thinks you're wise by the standards of this age, you should become fools so you can become wise. Basically, if you think you're better than everybody else, you need to realize that you are not. And then he continues. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness in God's sight, as is written. He catches the wise in their craftiness, and again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise are futile. So then, no more boasting about human leaders. Basically, quit Yelp reviewing your pastors. Quit Yelp reviewing your services. No more of that junk. And then he continues, all things are yours, whether Paul, Apollos, and then he adds in Cephas, I love that, Peter, and are the word or life or death or the present or the future, all are yours, and you are of Christ, and Christ is of God. What's he saying? Listen, you need to realize you're God's temple, so it's not about you. It's not about whether you think you're the greatest on earth or whether you think you are the peon of the world. You are God's temple. So residing in you is God's power. And the only reason you can help anybody or encourage anybody or help anybody to grow or even grow yourself is because God is in you. And here's the trouble. We have weeds. We've allowed all kind of thoughts and worries and struggles to overtake us. This is called an air potato. They live here in Florida. They are evil. Would you repeat after me? Evil. Ready? One, two, three. Evil. Very good. And if you want to really do it right, you go evil. Okay. So these are evil air potatoes. And if these get in your yard, they will take over everything. And then when you go to kill them, they will drop these little potatoes all over the place. And then they'll grow more evil potato vines. So if you find these in your yard, you have to eradicate them quickly because it's a pain when they start to grow. And here's the truth about you. Some of you so long have thought that life is about you, that you have a hard time worshiping God. And it takes work at first getting rid of that old trash where you think it's about your works and about your worth and about your value and about what you think is important. And you have to pull all those weeds out. Why? So that you can come to the place in your life where you bow before God and say, God, without you, I am nothing. But with you, I am everything. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, the Bible says. Listen to this. Do you not know that your bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you receive from God? You're not your own. You were bought with a price. Therefore, honor God with your bod. Ease. Here's what Paul's saying. Watch what you watch. 
Watch what you do. Watch what you focus on. Watch who you're with. Are they bringing you closer to God or farther away? Are the things you're reading and doing bringing you closer to God or farther away? Are you reading and doing everything based on what I want, me want, me want, me want? Or do you recognize that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit and God goes everywhere you go? And so as you walk around, you say, God, I know you're with me. And as you're discouraged and depressed, you say, God, I know you're with me. And on the days you feel like you're better than everyone else, you say, oh, God, I know that's not true. You're so much greater and higher and more powerful. Years ago, there's a true story about Christopher Wren, who was an architect in England. And he was rebuilding the tent, one of the, uh, one of the uh, uh, cathedrals over there. And he went up to a job site and he was walking around the job site and he runs into this first uh, uh, bricklayer. And this bricklayer looks all discouraged and he said, uh, what are you doing? He goes, oh, I'm, I'm trying to earn money for my family. And then he walks around the building farther and there's another bricklayer and that br bricklayer is even worse. <laughs> he looks like he's just been through the storm and he says, hey, what are you doing? He goes, oh, I'm laying bricks. And he walks around the corner into this other bricklayer who is there. And that bricklayer is singing. He's excited. He's got a gleam in his eyes, laying bricks. And the guy, and Christopher Wren says to him, what are you doing? He said, oh, I'm building a great cathedral. Listen, you need to recognize that every day, God can build a great cathedral in you. And there will come a day that you and I will no longer be here. But if you and I allow God to fill our lives so much that thanksgiving overflows, that love overflows, then other people will think about us and will say, I want what they have. And it's only through a relationship with Christ. If you've been around my mom, you know what it's like to see a woman who's been through trials and struggles who says, God's got this all the time. I want to encourage you in your life. Begin to say, God, I'm your temple. Help me to live like it. Lord, help me to value myself, not because of my value, but because of the value you have given me. Help me to become the person you want me to be. I want you to create environments in your life for growth so that God, when you're pulling the weeds and getting rid when you begin to worship him, your life will be full and not plastic. Do the things in your life that will draw you closer to him. Read your Bible. Spend time in his word. Spend time with other people. Use your gifts and God will use you and will grow you when you can't grow yourself. We're going to pray in just a second. We'll have our time of giving after that. But we're going to have our Lord's Supper. Rodney's going to come forward and do that. But let's pray before we do that. Father, thank you for this morning. I thank you for your word, your power, your strength, your love for us. Father, we can do nothing without you. But you said we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So strengthen us today through your love and your power. In Jesus' name, amen.